Assento do Senhor José Moreira, Rios Munhoz, Vice-Ministro de Relações Laboriais e Expressão da Colômbia. Bom dia, obrigada. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. And I hope I can say, brothers and sisters, in the fight to eliminate child labor. I'm the Executive Director of the International Labor Rights Forum in the U.S., and I'm also the Chair of the U.S. Child Labor Coalition's International Committee. I want to start by congratulating Brazil on the progress that's been made here in eliminating child labor and reducing the incidence of child labor. Fifteen years ago, I had the good fortune of organizing a conference here in Brazil in Sao Paulo on international labor standards and corporate accountability. We had the fortune of having Oded Graju as the keynote speaker, the founder of a Brink Foundation here in Brazil. He spoke eloquently and with commitment about the importance of reducing child labor being dependent on reducing income inequalities in Brazil. Today we see the progress of the vote here in Brazil. Sadly, we don't have the same good news to report for my country in the U.S. We actually have increasing income inequalities in the U.S. and we have not been able to push forward successfully protections for child workers in the agriculture fields of my country. So even though child labor, as the ILO statistics tell us, is greater in the poorer countries, there are still hidden pockets of child labor in the rich countries. This is a fight we all share. We need to address the root causes of child labor to improve the income, the livelihood opportunities, and the health of the parents of child laborers. In short, we need to raise the price farmers earn and the wages that workers receive. It's not enough to just take children out of the fields. We need to look at their welfare and their future opportunities. The ILO reports the majority of child labor is in agriculture. So I ask that we look together at agriculture policies holistically and how to improve rural life and recognize the skills and dignity of farmers and farm workers. Brothers and sisters, the conference declaration makes clear we all have responsibilities, governments, employers, worker organizations, and civil society in this fight. But in the fight for decent work, I have to say, employers have disproportionately greater influence, especially global corporations. And here, I want to address the governments of the poorest countries where the work to eliminate child labor is most challenging. We do not call, we the civil society groups in the North, we do not call for greater employer and corporate accountability for protectionist reasons. To the contrary, we are working to have global corporations, most of them based in the rich countries, to invest more, to pay better, to help improve the livelihoods of workers in their supply chains, and to join us in reducing inequalities. I know this is a big ask, but with the UN guidelines for business and human rights referenced in the declaration, we have an opportunity and another shared responsibility to push for greater corporate due diligence on corporations' impact on human rights, to collaborate on risk assessments and supply chains, to work transparently and not just take children out of work, but to reduce the risk of families finding themselves forced to send their children to work. So I hope we can go forward from this conference with a plan for each of the sectors where child labor is still prevalent. Agriculture, domestic labor, informal sector. And I want to close by repeating a four-point plan that was put forward yesterday by Sue Longley from the International Union for Food and Agriculture Workers, specific to the sector of agriculture. We need to create agriculture policies that are centered on the right to food and the right to decent work. Corporate risk assessments and supply chains in agriculture should look exactly at that as well. We need to recognize and build the skills of farmers and farm workers. In reality, their knowledge is great and they are on the front line of climate change. Third, we need to expand legislation for child labor and labor rights overall to cover agriculture workers. And finally, the fourth, we need to define commitment.
commitments among governments, employers, worker organizations, and civil society. Specific concrete commitments and goals to improve the laws and policies that protect child laborers and their families. Thank you.